Okay, so here's the dragon all primed and uh, obviously completely built. A um, couple things, the arm guards and leg guards I initially put on uh, and the reason for that is because I needed gold uh, to put on this dragon because I've been using a lot of gold on the newer Dark Elf models. So I've been adding a lot of gold to the army, I wanted to keep it on this figure so I added the arms and leg guards and they looked really stupid so I, I yanked them off before the uh, plastic completely solidified and then had to clean it up a bit. Did leave uh, this piece though. Almost added the headpiece, but no. And the base, uh, rather than using the casualties, I just didn't like the, the feel of having dead bodies on the base. And I just seemed odd. Uh, went with more of a um, sort of a ancient battlefield wasteland type theme. So I got a bunch of old weapons and there's a few skulls and I added a couple more of those stumps. And I may have added a bit too much stuff because I'm going to add a lot of overgrowth to, the, to this as well. But uh, we'll see. Now, oops, for the main color of the dragon, the big question. The main color for my army is a mix of colors that I should have taken out of my paint tray before turning on the camera. Here they are. Um, the main color for the army is a mix of the blue, violet, and violet from the Vallejo model range. Uh, which I was thinking of something similar to use on the dragon, however, if I use my main color on the dragon, then I cannot use the main color on the riders because it's all going to be the same color. Um, so, decided not to go with that. Didn't want to use black because there is a little black in my army, but this is a lot of black. Uh, I thought about using a very, very dark violets on him and doing mainly a really dark violet and then using this for some hard edge uh, highlighting. Uh, but, well, up until about 10 minutes ago, I was going to do that. However, I have been working on a bunch of Corsairs lately. I got 50 of these little buggers to paint up. And, is that focusing? There we go. And, while I was just thinking, actually I had the bottles of paint in my hand, um, glanced at these guys, and, um, I really like how the cloaks here, uh, with the blue contrasts with the bone and the uh, the brown of the cloak because I wanted to add uh, a lot of brown on this figure to also blend it into the army. I'm using quite a few browns especially on the harpies I did not too long ago. So I wanted leathery brown wings and uh, bone on the horns here and maybe brown along the, uh, the underbody. So I am more leaning towards this blue color uh, I thought about blue initially, but it, it seemed to be too, a bit too high elf. I didn't want it too bright, but now that I've been doing these guys lately, I've been rethinking it. So, the current plan is, this blue is actually uh, magic blue from the game color line. So I'm going to do something similar to this. I have not decided yet if it's going to be this intense. Uh, so what I'm going to do is basically just start with some stormy blue and a big brush. Ooh, why is this so stiff? I didn't clean this out well. Uh, start with stormy blue and a big brush and slowly start adding the magic blue and um, I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna stop at this point but this is gonna be the base color stormy blue and we'll see somewhere within this range we'll end up. Alright, here's the dragon blue dragon now and uh, at the moment it's looking pretty crappy. Uh, dry brushed it mm, boy how many was that now? Three times? Two mixing in more uh, magic blue to the stormy blue and then one time just very lightly with the magic blue. And yeah it does look pretty crappy. Uh, however we could clean it up a bit. Um, what I'm going to be doing is taking the magic blue and thinning it out and doing some uh, cleanup work wherever need be to uh, solidify, best word I can think of, some of the colors here. And you know, dry brushing doesn't hit everything, it just hits the raised areas. It doesn't necessarily hit all the places you want the highlights to go. So, I'm going to add some more here in the wings and flesh out the head and the tips of the uh, head 
add a bit of white to the magic blue for some more highlights and the knuckles and hit areas like that and that really cleans up the dry brushing and so it uh, it looks a lot better second thing I'm gonna do some experimenting uh, I had this idea before I started this of um, instead of doing the same blue as on the cloaks trying to do a a different shade of blue more like something like a sickly blue um, However, I can still do it afterwards, which actually also helps because the, the dry brushing is kind of rough. I could put a wash on over it, which softens the uh, the roughness of the dry brushing, and also it will uh, alter the color. So I'm going to be taking, I don't know if I'm going to use an actual ink or just a really heavy um, wash of this uh, Vallejo wash umber shade. And that's going to add a bit of brown into the uh, blue, which uh, I think should give it a nice look. It won't be as uh, stark as it is now. And I did say I wanted to add some more browns to the whole whole paint job. So hopefully this will tie in with the brown on the. Uh, that is eventually going to go on the wings and maybe here. I'm not sure what I'm doing with this area yet. It's either going to be gray or it's going to be a different shade of brown. I will have to uh, think about that. So at the moment, a little magic blue, get out my better quality brushes, thin this out, basically something more akin to uh, actual layering. I'm actually going to add a bit of stormy blue to this. Since putting the color on by hand, it tends to be uh, more intense than if you dry brush it. So it's uh, putting on with a brush like this, it comes out brighter than uh, you would when dry brushing, despite it being the exact same color. So tone it down with a little stormy blue and fill in the rough spots. So combination dry brushing and layering saves a lot of time. Plans. Uh, first off, this is probably looking crappy again because my brand new uh, shiny camera, unfortunately, it had to return. It just it just didn't work very well for shooting these little macro videos. Um, so you have to deal with this until I get a, another new one. Second change of plans is uh, my purpley blue dragon here. Uh, Where did I leave off on this one? Um, so I decided to paint it blue. Uh, did some highlights. Blah 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 blah. Uh, wasn't too sure about the color. Went to bed, and uh, weirdest thing, I had a dream about a purple dragon with a, a fleshy colored. Uh, underbody. I don't dream about miniatures really, so it, I don't, it just suddenly the image flashed my mind and I thought, wow, that would be really cool. So, repainting the sucker. Uh, I have this funky uh, color of purple from Vallejo. And first I was just testing it to see how the color uh, would actually look. And so I just dry brushed over the blue. My plan was to uh, reprimer the whole thing and then repaint it all in purple but actually just dry brushing this over the blue gives a really nice iridescent iridescent effect so that is the plan right now is just to dry brush this all over the blue again and uh, figure out how to add some highlights and still unsure about the belly color but uh, once I get the purple laid out uh, we'll see what happens there so um, haven't edited any of this video yet, so I don't know what I just said, so I may repeat myself here. But the uh, plan is to uh, dry brush this, uh, do a couple highlights, and then go over again with some thinned version or highlight color of this version. Uh, on uh, Use that thin color on some of the other more areas where I want to increase the color. You can't rely completely on dry brushing by using a combination of the layering and dry brushing. Uh, speed up the project, but also make it looks better than if I just rely solely on uh, solely on dry brushing. So here we go, color number two. All right, hopefully I got this damn huge dragon in frame now. Uh, decided 
to go with some um, game color Wolf's Gray, which is a very light grayish blue color or cool white, whatever you want to call it, light cool gray. Um, mix that in with the purple for highlights and I'm going around with my very large cat tongue brush. Br dry brushing uh, highlights on. This is very just very subtle change, nothing major yet. I'm just kind of slowly building it up, seeing how far I want to take it. And uh, coming out not too bad at the moment. I'm also trying to think of what color to paint the underbelly. I was um, thinking of the flesh color. Something not, not true human color flesh, but something a bit more pinkish, pale flesh, but I'm having second thoughts. I'm thinking blue might actually work, or actually something like this for the underbelly. Because um, it will play well with the blue that's underneath the purple. And if I can get a whole blue theme going over the entire model, that, that will really blend everything together. So yeah, just um, subtle dry brush of this, just kind of highlight uh, some areas, nothing, uh, this isn't a very, anything very drastic right now. And once I'm done with this, I'll go over again with uh, adding more Wolf's Gray to that purple. And start bringing it up to a tone that, uh, that I like. Probably going to be another at least two or three dry brushing layers here with Wolf's, more Wolf's Gray each time. Slowly coming along. I did, uh, move. how many did I do now? Two? Three? Jeez, I can't remember now. Uh, anyway, two or three dry brushes, adding the wolf spray. And, um, it's not done yet. I'm gonna go back with some washes at some points, but, uh, decided to test some colors for the underbelly, and I think I got lucky with my first selection. I got some, uh, dark blue-gray here. I'm starting to put this on, and I'm doing it slightly thinned, and I'm also doing it with a uh, a pretty old brush that has the uh, the bristles already frayed out. And I'm tired of trying to keep this damn dragon in in frame because it's such a pain in the ass. All the wings makes it hard to light. So anyway, drying br the brush out a little bit, and just kind of flicking. Yeah, you can see how badly this brush is splayed. Or, or, there you go. And I'm using that to my advantage because I'm just sort of flicking it over the surface here along the belly area so then I get a nice serrated edge um, up from the underbelly to the rest of the dragon. And that will help with uh, you know, blending the color in. I don't want a straight line of color going down. You want them, I want them more blended in so it looks more natural. So this crappy brush actually helps. Alright, so we're going to go around, paint this, and then figure out how light I want to do it. Also one thing I want to mention, um, I'm not painting super duper awesomely. Uh, that's not how I'm doing this dragon. You know, some people think well, some people think I'm better at painting than I think I actually am. Uh, this is more of a, a fast project. I could have really taken my time and layered everything on it, but uh, you know I don't like to do that all the time. Sometimes I just want to get things done. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is kind of don't don't expect too much here. Uh, hopefully this project will be more something along the lines if um, you're just starting out and you want to learn some easier techniques and hopefully this will help help you uh, because the dry brushing that I did and then putting layers over that and then we're gonna add uh, some washes later and basically everything I'm leading up to here is uh, ways to dry brush a model but then go back over it with different techniques and clean it up so you just don't have a simple albeit uh, easily, well, crappy painted dry brush model. So hopefully this will help. 
help to alleviate that so you still get the speed of the dry brushing but uh, you know a bit more detail and uh, make your models a bit more high quality.